Now, for spectroscopy, you want to make a single mode uh, uh, laser, and so you want to put a grating on, and so this actually shows, uh, shows that uh, you can get single mode with the same standards as telecom laser, 100 milliwatt of uh, peak power in this case at uh, 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 room uh, temperature at a wavelength of 4.6. And uh, these were studied by uh, many groups. I'm going to show you here the results of uh, Claire, uh, Claire uh, Machol, and where she did a very extensive study of uh, distributed feedback laser in the two atmospheric windows for uh, spectroscopy. And you can see that you can cover essentially very interesting chemicals from CO, NO, methane, and so forth. So now I'm going to go to the spectroscopy part. Well, uh, spectroscopy is technique. Essentially, you want to control the path of uh, 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 propagation, particularly if you want to have high sensitivity, you might want to use a multi-pass up to 100 meter and so forth. The whole point, QC laser have demonstrated part per billion in volume sensitivity of many care with high selectivity, and in, in cases also down to part per, uh, per trillion. And uh, these are some of the work of Frank Tittle groups and Bob Curl at Rice, where they did essentially using a cooled QC laser at 77 Kelvin, because you get narrow line width, long cell, you can negate all the isotopes of these uh, interesting uh, chemicals here, for example, rare isotope H218, uh, water with, uh, with the oxygen A18 uh, uh, and so forth. This is a more practical type of uh, application. It's basically a fielded sensor where it measures the concentration of CO in the traffic. This is a rush hour of Houston in uh, uh, Texas. And uh, this uh, experiments we had fun to do with Ford Motor Company. I'm glad that Ford is still doing well, okay? Otherwise, I would have had problem showing maybe some other companies these days. You see, the APA, this is inevitable. It might take 10 years. The vehicle certification will become much tougher. You're going to go from maybe tens of parts per million, 100 parts per million, down to the tens of parts per billion. It's going to happen. These experiments were done years ago with the Ford, in fact, to, uh, to uh, detect uh, uh, using wavelength modulator QC laser to measure NO concentration in parts per billion uh, precisely out of the exhaust of a, a car. Now, as, and I'm going to go to the astomeric kind of uh, propagation uh, uh, studies. I mean, a very interesting application is so-called standoff detection technique. Essentially, suppose that you have a target, and you might have a suspicious chemical, could be an explosive or something on this target. Okay, you can use then a pulse QC laser essentially to illuminate the uh, uh, target here. Okay, then the scattered reflected light is uh, collected using a telescope and uh, is used, and then what you can do is you, acu you can acoustically a, a excite a, a resonating tuning fork, and you can plot the resonance amplitude as a function of wavelengths, okay? And in this way, you can really de uh, detect a selectively surface ad adsorbates. In fact, they use this, this group used it to detect PTN, which is famous or infamous, have been used by the shoe bomber, in the famous incident not too many years ago. ago. So, um, so in this case, the path length was of the order of uh, 50 meter. Now, this is a, a very interesting work. I think in atmospheric chemistry, there is a tremendous amount of activity going on. I've selected some of the work. These are instruments made by a company called Aerodyne in uh, Aerodyne Research. And essentially, they are designing these instruments that contain uh, several QCL, these are single mode uh, distributed feedback, you see to detect in this case methane, N2O, and CO, and a multipass cell. And these were flown in the atmosphere to uh, detect uh, essentially with very low noise. We are talking here of be able to detect signals of 100 parts per billion with a noise level maybe of half a part per billion. So there have been some really re uh, remarkable studies that I want to show here. Okay, this is, the, uh, uh, this is a mission, okay, using this Gulfstream uh, aircraft uh, headed by Professor Steve Wofsey. 
And uh, the idea is to essentially do a latitude and altitude study profile of tracer for global circulation model. That's the key point. So basically, the, the plane flies along the date line in high altitude from the troposphere to the stratosphere. And what you see here on the left, the measurements of trace gases, the leakage from the troposphere, which is the lower part below this line, into the actual stratosphere. And uh, this shows the next, which is uh, quite uh, impressive. You see, this is basically a plot. Okay, uh, laterally you have the uh, latitude here. The actual uh, plane, uh, you have the uh, uh, latitude here, degrees of latitude, and here you have the altitude. So these measurements resolve the vertical and horizontal structure of the atmosphere. First, and these are the first to provide a high resolution section of the atmosphere. So I would say QCL spectrometer are uniquely capable of making this kind of uh, measurements. And this is important because the patterns provide new information about location and strength of the emission of greenhouse gases for the atmosphere. Now I'm going to move to application. It's easy to make a multi-wavelength QC laser because the different resonances do not interfere with each other. That's the whole point. So you can stack an active region here in the blue at one wavelength and down one in the orange at a different wavelength. You run current through and here you have a laser that can emit many wavelengths simultaneously. So the next, uh, um, the next uh, uh, thing is application. So, so first I have to decide how am I going to make uh, the active region that gives me the broadest gain spectrum. And the trick essentially is to use a so-called bound to continuum transition. This device was pioneered by uh, Professor Jerome Face, who is at the, uh, the ETH uh, now. And the idea is you inject into a localized state and then you have tightly spaced laser transition to a manifold of lower state that gives you a broad gain spectrum. And this is really, uh, and then you, you actually can combine. You can make a, a stack of uh, active region that emits at one wavelength, the next stack in the same growth at a different wavelength and so forth. And in fact, these are the uh, results. And then you can use an external cavity. You see, you have anti-reflection coating on a facet to do the tuning. And in fact, these are very impressive results from the group of uh, Professor Feist. Essentially, what they have here, they managed to stack up to five active regions and to cover simultaneously a, la a laser that lasers at, uh, can laser at all wavelengths, actually, between uh, 7 7.5 to 11.4. So actually, if you pump hard enough, you can get them all uh, to uh, laser. And then, of course, if you want to have selectivity of the wavelengths, you put the grating, you rotate the grating in external cavity, and you can choose one particularly of these uh, lasing wavelengths. In continuous wave, they have a bit less range, but it's still quite impressive, and look also the peak power. So this has been a workhorse for a lot of interesting spectroscopy. And in fact, there is a company, a daylight solution, that makes this box that has essentially an external cavity controlled uh, uh, with a great in QCL and uh, sells quite well. And I'm going to show you some of the application of this box.